Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Today on Roll for Crit, we attempt to escape the dark sector. In the game of the same name, this is the follow-up to Escape the Dark Castle. This one has a sci-fi theme. All players take on members of a crew of a ship that has been captured. You are now in the prison of a larger ship, and you've got to make your way through all kinds of different trials, uh, find the hangar bay, and get your ship back from whatever horrible monsters or things have taken it over. The way it works is each player has their own personal crew member with their own personal personal crew die. Each crew member has a specific set of stats that will determine how frequent the different symbols are on their dice. So they come in uh, one of three flavors, might, cunning, and wisdom. And depending on what types of challenges you're attempting to overcome, one of those three could be more useful than the others. So you might want certain crew members to attempt certain tasks. Each turn, you choose a player to lead the crew, and then you draw the top card of the mission deck. That mission deck is going to have some art and some flavor text, and it's going to give the crew usually some kind of a choice to make. So maybe there will be an enemy and you can choose to try to fight it or avoid it, or you may have some other kind of adventure involving space horrors. Often you'll come away with new items that you gain. You might be given the opportunity to heal some of your damage or possibly take damage if you're not as successful or make some sort of a skill check, so to speak, where you're attempting to roll your dice to get certain symbols. Once you've completed the card, you move on and draw another one until eventually you make it through all three acts in the deck and face off against the final boss. Whether it comes down to that final boss or some of the encounters you may come across, odds are you're gonna have to do some fighting. The way combat will work is usually you'll choose whether to try and do some range combat or go straight into close combat. In order to do range combat, you're gonna need a range weapon. Now there are different element types to the range weapon, energy, bullets, or explosive, and your gun will need to make sure it has ammo for that. If it has no ammo, you can't fire it. Now, this ammo is gonna be dice, just like most of this game, and when you roll them, they'll have different results. Depending on the enemy, you could do more or less damage, and depending on your weapon, you could get a special effect or backfire, depending on the result. With ranged combat, once you are able to deal damage, you just choose which one of the enemy's dice to remove. You will also be rolling a die for the enemy to see if they are able to fire back at you, and depending on the card, you'll take some amount of damage. Now, if no one has any ammo left or is unable to be the one to fire a shot, you are forced to enter the close combat phase. This is a little similar, but you will roll with your crew die, and depending on the results, you have to try to match what dice are left in the opponent's health pool. In some cases, if you roll a shield on your die, you will prevent damage from the enemy because since you're in close combat, they will always hit. There is no rolling a separate die to see if they hit you. If you are able to remove all their dice, you have successfully defeated the enemy before they've been able to hit you back. The other big thing to keep in account is you don't always have to fight. You can A, use a flanking action once per combat, this pretty much is you sneaking around to try to get an advantage and whether it's range or close combat will help you deal an extra bit of damage. There is a med bot, which is pretty much lets you heal one. And then you can choose to just take cover. That is taking a turn to sort of take a break. You won't take any damage, but you won't be dealing any. However, everyone cannot take cover. Someone must always be attacking. So in the case of range, for example, someone must always be attacking with a range weapon. In close combat, someone's gotta be out there distracting the enemy trying to punch them back. So you have to manage who's fighting, who's recovering, in order to make sure you're all able to stay alive to the very end. Because if one person dies, the entire game is over. The mission cards are separated into three different acts, and you will have four of each act each time you play in order. So as you play, things are gonna get, uh, relatively speaking, progressively harder until eventually you reach that final boss, which will be the toughest combat encounter. And a lot of the game is about deciding when you wanna fight because it'll reward you with new weapons or healing items, uh, and when you want to just not fight and try to avoid those encounters altogether because uh, you know, everybody starts with 12 health, and you can take hits pretty easily. This is definitely a challenging game, and it's likely that you're gonna lose 
I would say most of the times that you play this, uh, sometimes you might get a really lucky uh, game. Sometimes you might get a really unlucky game in terms of how the dice shake out and which items you get. But even like all things being even, I think it's it definitely leans more on the harder side of games. I would agree with that. And though I do feel like you said, a lot of it comes down to more luck and unluck. I feel a lot of it will come down, not even the items. I think most items are actually pretty good and work well. It's just, do you get those right rolls at the right time? Some of them aren't too bad. And unlike the previous game, because it's separating acts, getting maybe some bad luck in the earlier rounds isn't too bad. However, some of the later cards can be really devastating if you just keep rolling the same thing over and over. It is definitely something that, that can happen. You know, uh, there are items in there that will allow you to re-roll and allow you to, you know, add extra symbols and stuff like that. That's that's definitely a big part of what you're looking for. But yeah, uh, of course, ultimately, you are at the mercy of those, of those dice. And just mm -hmm. like uh, Escape the Dark Castle, which we also played, uh, this is very much all about that retro old school atmospheric kind of vibe. Whereas that one was very much like a seventies kind of uh, fantasy old school D and D type of thing. This one of course is sci-fi and it's got like little elements of there's like some cyberpunk and some horror and some, a little, a little action adventure. There's, there's some movie references perhaps in there that you'll, you'll understand if you play. And it's definitely like that, like the first game, I think, more about the immersion and feeling like you're on an adventure than it is necessarily about being super balanced. It's it's trying to be like an old school sort of a game, I think. I was going to say it reminds me a lot of like old point and clicks and something where like like you don't Dragon's know, Lair or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, you're going to click something and next thing you know, you got eaten up by uh, an evil mushroom or something. <laughs> that's just what happens. You just keep replaying it. And that's one of the nice things though cuz this is the kind of game that is difficult, and sometimes you just want to yell at the dice. <laughs> but odds are you'll be able to just reboot and start a new game and have a different combination of items. And uh, while I find most items to be actually pretty good, you know, like even the, the weakest ones were like heal one, and which usually are like, yeah, we still need to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, when you find like something like the rocket launcher, you're like, yeah, this is great. But then you don't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they're, they're still good. I think the biggest uh, upgrade from this game over Castle is the combat. Whereas in Dark Castle, it really was just what I said, all about just enjoy the theme, look at the cool art, and see what happens. Uh, in this one, it's possible to be relatively strategic. The flanking action, I think, is really cool, and deciding when to use that and feeling good about the extra damage it allows you to do, I think that's fun, and, and the fact that you can take cover and all this stuff, it feels more akin to a traditional RPG-style combat system while still being really very simple and, and just dice rolling, and anybody can do it. It's been a while since I've entered the Dark Castle, but my memories of it, it felt more like when we were deciding things in combat, I was like, all right, who wants to be the tank this round or something, you know? It's just trying to see if you make it to the end with life points. This, well, that's still an issue in this because you don't want anyone to die. There was, I felt like there's more of like, all right, but if I flank, because you have ammo left and I can go around, like there was actually strategizing a bit more, mm -hmm. um, which helps take away some of that randomness and just feeling of like, it's a, it's a race of endurance. Yeah, I mean, it still is, but I, I still, I think that little bit helps a lot. And the big thing for me though, was also the, um, the stages in dark castle. You just pretty much drink from the fire hose. You can, you can run across anything at any time. This has different acts. So I feel like it feels more progressive and you don't feel as bad if you get the bad roll in the beginning. Cause you're like, look, sure. We lost three health or something, you know, let's move on. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. And I think that helps a lot. You yeah. know, you don't, it, it, it stacking the deck then that little bit away, because you could still have some terrible outcomes in the early on, you know, it's still, I think it just helps lessen the blow just enough. So you want to do that. Let's do another run kind of feeling. Yeah. I think they made some very smart upgrades in that sense that uh, kind of makes sense with the, uh, the sci-fi theme where I feel like that's maybe more about strategy and there's hacking and stuff like that, as opposed to just. I'm here with an axe. I'm going <laughs> to knock down doors and find dragons and stuff. Crits and misses for Escape the Dark Sector. Crits. Considering its relative simplicity, the combat system offers a fair amount of depth and strategy. 
It's engaging to discuss how long you should be shooting at the target before entering close range, and it's especially rewarding when you're able to complete that flanking and do some massive damage. The game is punishing and you're likely to die when you play, but the setup is very quick and it's easy to just go again once you're done. Co-op games tend to be a bit more challenging because you're not playing against other human players. However, this game is quick enough so if you do get that loss, it won't be too disheartening. Compared to its predecessor, Dark Sector feels that it strikes a better balance between being challenging while not feeling too unfair in regards to things such as its mission structure, which is separated into three different acts. Misses. When it comes down to it, there actually isn't too much choice in this game. There are some cards that may say choose option A or B, but it does feel a bit like just reading a story and seeing how things turn out. Outside of combat, most of the choices you'll be making don't feel too consequential, and often your fate is decided by the stats of your pre-generated character. You're going to lose. A lot. But the problem is not that you're losing, but that most of the time it's not because you made some bad choices, it's because the dice just weren't rolling your way. A lot of this game will come down to the luck of those dice. Escape the Dark Sector is sort of the sci-fi upgraded version in a way of Escape the Dark Castle. Now, it doesn't have all the expansions the previous one had, but some changes that we enjoy. They both, however, do fit a sort of niche that I think we both like, but I think needs to be stated because I know some people won't. And that's, it really does aim to be that like old school, like sci-fi or Dungeons and Dragons first edition kind of look. Like it's black and white. The art style looks like it's from that era. I enjoy it because it is very sort of retro y and nostalgic. And I believe you sound like you do too, Jonathan. Yeah. But I can see a lot of people feeling like it's feels a little old to them. Yeah, you got you got to be in for this game. You got to really be on board for that kind of thing. And I think in general, this game is just like Dark Castle. If you if you liked or didn't like that one, I think you'll feel the same way about this one. Uh this is this is not for everybody. I think it's honestly probably going to be a little polarizing if you don't want a game where there isn't tons of strategy, even though for me, I actually think this one is an upgrade, we said, uh, over the original, and I think there's enough there that I'm still engaged, and I still feel to some extent that I'm uh, making decisions, especially in combat. I think that's where most of that occurs. But if you're not, if you hear about dice rolling and you're like, no, thank you, uh, then this definitely won't be the game for you. But if you're on board for just a cool thematic ride, and you're a fan of that art style, and you want to just find weird, crazy monsters and robots and see what happens. This is a great pick. Uh, you can play it solo. You can play it with up to four players for multiplayer. And I think both work relatively well. Uh, this actually would be a good one right now for uh, remote gaming. <laughs> you could, if you have a webcam, uh, you could have some friends join in and uh, just show this on the webcam as, as a little treat. But I, I like it. I really like both these games. Yeah, there's maybe a little bit of repetition, but for something that just once in a while you break this out, you you get some snacks maybe, you, you turn the lights down and play some spooky music. Like, it's that kind of a thing. It's like when you have a slumber party <laughs> and you want to feel like uh, you're having a, a sleepover in 1984 or something. <laughs> Honestly, I think I might play some old game music, maybe from the Sierra Games era, because it feels like that. And I think that's part of the fun Shadow of just... Gate. Yeah, like, it's... Well, if you're into that and you can get into that sort of mood set, it's sort of fine to lose even if the same creature keeps regenerating like 10 times in a row because right. it just feels like that's what's supposed to happen. It's sort of like when you play the old school arcade games, you're supposed to get beaten up a lot, you know? <laughs> right. And if you like that or miss that kind of era, I think this will be like be the perfect fit for you. That's the thing, like you said, with polarizing. You're, I think there's a chance you can be like, I don't like anything that's here on the table now. Or it's like, this is exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited and I hope that they make more expansions just like they did with the original because that was, you know, that's obviously a big part of the replay value is having just more and more cards to throw in so you never know what's coming. But we will find out exactly what's in the works. If you've played Dark Sector or Dark Castle, maybe you were a backer of one or both, talk to us in the comments section, let us know. What do you think about it? Are you one of those people like us who is really into it? Or are you one of the people who this is just a no-go for you? We'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Till then, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this has been Roll for Crit. 
Here's an idea. Support our Patreon or like and subscribe to this channel for more. Fagulu Mikthawa Audio Expansion Wakana Cthulhu Awesome.